The city of Seattle has extended their local eviction moratorium for the sixth time. I'm Tony, and this is Real Estate Investing in Landlord News. All right, so I have an interesting article for you today, and it shouldn't come as a surprise, but the city of Seattle has decided to extend their local eviction moratorium again. Okay, and this is the sixth time. This time, the eviction moratorium is set to go all the way until January of 2022. But before I get into the article, go ahead, hit the like and subscribe button. Maybe leave a comment down below and let me know if you think the city of Seattle will extend the eviction moratorium again come January. I mean, think about it. It's going to be the middle of winter. They don't want to kick people out in the cold. And they've already proven that they have no concern whatsoever with the landlords who are suffering through this mess. So my bet is they're going to go ahead and extend it again come January. Unless, of course, you know, there's some kind of court action or they're able to get the whole thing thrown out. Anyway, this article, it comes from CapitolHillSeattle.com and it says, With sixth extension of the COVID-19 eviction moratorium, Seattle buying more time for federal aid new programs to help tenants and landlords. Yeah, let's see what this article says. Seattle is buying time for thousands of renters and landlords as Mayor Jenny Durkin has signed an executive order for the sixth extension of the city's moratorium on residential and commercial evictions during the ongoing COVID-19 crisis. The ban on evictions will now stretch into January 2022. By then, the city will have a new mayor and perhaps a plan and the relief funding necessary to emerge from the looming tenant and landlord crisis. Wow. Okay, so here's a couple of problems I have with what they said right there. They're buying time. Okay, how long have they been buying time now? Well, the whole pandemic, all these eviction moratoriums began in March of 2020. Okay, so they're going all the way to January of 2022. So basically, they needed to buy, buy time for two years. You know, they haven't been able to get the landlords the relief they need to keep tenants in these units, okay? For two years. That's completely out of line, completely ridiculous. You know, they, they just keep extending it and extending it and extending it. And next thing you know, it's going to be like 10 years down the line unless they, somebody is able to put a stop to this mess. Another little fact I didn't know was that apparently there's a commercial eviction moratorium in the city of Seattle as well. Okay, now I have big issues with commercial eviction moratoriums because commercial property is valued upon the rent it receives. So by telling a landlord they can't receive any rent, they're basically making the property worthless. Okay, a, a landlord wouldn't even be able to sell it. So yeah, you're, you're putting commercial landlords and residential landlords in great amounts of financial distress by not allowing them to collect rents and not providing them with any reimbursement whatsoever okay and even in the case of commercial landlords i don't know if there is any stimulus for them okay so uh they're, they're just completely screwed they're just completely out of money and their assumption always is once again well this is just large corporate companies and they've got tons of money to be able to survive this and that's just not the case not with residential landlords or even with commercial ones now commercial landlords in general you know usually have a little bit more money but there are small commercial landlords too that maybe own you know one building that has just one tenant in it and they're getting completely screwed over by this kind of eviction moratorium so that's why i don't like those eviction moratoriums either Okay, so yeah, I mean, crazy all the way to January of 2022, but not surprising at the same time. We are talking about Seattle here. We led the way as the first major U.S. city to be impacted by COVID-19. Every step of this pandemic, our residents and community listen to science and public health officials, which is why we have the lowest cases, hospitalizations, and deaths of every major city. Seattle continues to show the nation how to protect small businesses and residents by establishing and continuing one of the first in the nation moratoriums on evictions to keep families safe. Our early actions have and continue to keep people safe and housed, Durkin said on a statement on the extension. 
While we face the unexpected rise of the Delta variant, this next extension will ensure every level of government can provide rental assistance and housing support to tenants and landlords, which is critical to stabilizing the community as we reopen and recover. But the problem is a lot of landlords still aren't getting rental assistance, okay? And the commercial landlords definitely aren't getting any. So when you have these eviction moratoriums in place, they have all these different rules on it. For example, the person, in order to qualify for the rental assistance, they actually had to be impacted, you know, have lost their job due to the coronavirus pandemic. But in a lot of cases, they didn't actually lose any income due to the coronavirus pandemic. They just decided to stop paying. Okay, or maybe they had to make less than 80% of the median area income, but they actually made more than that amount. So once again, they don't qualify for the rent relief funds, yet the landlord still can't evict that person. The landlord still can't get a paying tenant in there and the landlord is still losing a ton of money. So that's why I've always considered eviction moratoriums to be an unconstitutional taking of private property by the government without just compensation, okay? So the other thing that I saw that she said in her, in her little statement was that they're going to protect small businesses. Now, eviction moratoriums do not protect small businesses, okay? They punish small businesses. Now, maybe they're forgetting, but real estate, you know, landlords are running businesses and you are punishing us by not allowing us to collect our rents, okay? You're punishing just tons of small businesses by doing this sort of thing. Instead of pushing funds to help us pay our bills, you're sitting here and telling us that we can't even operate our business. You're dictating how we operate our business and you're going against the constitution in the way you're doing it. So I'm 100% against you. Your statement there is just full of crap, essentially. And, you know, you just need to keep your mouth shut. <laughs> the latest extension comes as some $46 billion in federal emergency rental assistance is trickling into state and local programs to help renters behind on payments. For some, the assistance will never arrive. In Seattle, the estimate is 60000 currently behind on rent. So, yeah. Keep in mind though, the money has to get to the landlords. The rental assistance is not for the tenants. They should never see a dime of it, okay? The landlords are the ones who need this. Otherwise, their businesses will fail. They will face foreclosure, bankruptcy, destroyed credit, you know, everything because they aren't getting paid by these renters. And at the same time, they're never talked about when they ever they bring any of this stuff up All, the only thing they ever think about it oh well we got to keep these tenants housed you know we got to keep these tenants housed not realizing that after nearly two years if these people don't have jobs yet you know they, they just went over of how low the covid rate was and how things are getting back to normal in seattle yet at the same time they expect landlords to just continue on indefinitely without getting paid that's wrong okay There is hope the ongoing moratorium will provide time for some renters to catch up and for more protections to be put in place to stave off a wave of evictions. In Seattle, new laws have been put in place to help protect tenants once the eviction restrictions are lifted, including ordinances requiring payment plan options for late rent during or within six months after the city's COVID-19 state of emergency ends, a financial hardship defense for eviction court proceedings, a ban on eviction during winter months, and a ban on evictions during the school year for families and teachers. So yeah, uh, keep that in mind, all this stuff I just read, okay? Because the eviction moratorium in Seattle ends January of 2022, right? But they've already passed a law saying that there's no evictions going on in winter. And even after winter ends, there's no evictions during the school year. So now we're all the way up to June, okay? Landlords, here's some advice, and this is coming from somebody in a very um, conservative place. You know, I live in Omaha, Nebraska, okay, and they're very landlord friendly here. Prices are low. You know, you, you have a lot more options in a place like this than you do in a place like Seattle. I know that you get a great deal of appreciation off of your properties, okay, but it just isn't worth it to have to deal with a government that just hates you and hates your business so much. I suggest you just leave, okay? I've I've gone over too many articles about Seattle and its ridiculous tenant-friendly policies and 
unless you are a large corporate landlord, you know, if you're just a small person just renting out a few units, then it just isn't worth it, okay, to deal with all this stress and all this drama and never knowing if, you know, they're going to just strip your property rights completely away from you.